and welcome to tonight's tutorial. Thank you for joining me. It is a very hot night here in London, so I've got, I'm gonna get a little bit hot. You might see me just kind of trying to cool myself down just a little bit, but I hope you are all keeping well. And thank you for joining me. I'm Pam Wrigley and I'm a wedding makeup artist and hairstylist and head trainer at Create Beautiful Hair. And tonight I'm going to show you how to create a really beautiful updo that I created on one of my brides recently. And she had quite short hair. So I thought I would show you how to do this style because it's super pretty and gorgeous. So why not? So we already have some texture in the hair. And as you can see, I've put a little bit of curl in here just at the sides. She's had some salt spray in there. And if you were working on a client, you would put a little bit of mousse as well. And I generally find that the finer the hair, I would say, if you want to get one of, create one of these kind of textured, gorgeous kind of, they look kind of effortless, but if you want to create one of these styles with very fine hair, just be a little bit more generous with your product. So you'll need a little bit, you know, a good amount of mousse, a good amount of salt spray, and then blow dry the hair to get a bit of root lift and movement in there. And if you have the time, you could always crimp. That will give an extra kind of level of intensity. So you'll get more volume, more texture to the style, and it'll just make it look like you've got twice as much hair. But if you're working with somebody who's got quite a lot of hair, then you can probably just, and maybe it's already quite dry or quite coarse, then you'll be able to just go, you know, just go straight ahead after you've done the mousse and the salt spray, you'll be ready to start styling. So here we are. First thing to do is to create your height. So if you have any questions, hi, Sharika, she's joining me again tonight. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions as we go through the tutorial, please just type your questions into the chat box and I will do my best to answer. Um, let's get started. So as I say, we have some hair prep already with the mousse and the salt spray and this practice head's had a little bit of crimping and I've also curled a few sections of hair so I've created a little bit of root lift and height here. Now we do have tutorials on our online bridal hair course that show you step by step how to get to this stage. So if you're not sure what to do, then you could always join me for my online training course. And there's a link for that at the in the intro for our, on our kind of uh, bio page but I'm gonna secure this height here. Now I'm gonna try, I'm going to really try and make sure it's all nice and central, but because I'm standing to one side, sometimes when I'm doing these, creating these styles online, when I'm doing them live, because I'm kind of creating it from the side and I'm looking in the mirror, so I'm kind of doing it back to front, sometimes they're slightly off center, but when you're creating your bridal hairstyles, make sure you stand at the back so you can see exactly what you're doing. But I would definitely recommend having a mirror so you can see what's happening from the front and also your client, more importantly, your client can see what you're doing so she can kind of give you direction as you go along. Okay, so we've got a lovely height there and you might have noticed I've secured it quite low down. So almost just below the occipital bone. So we've got this nice amount of height here and softness and roundness there. So hi Carter, thank you for joining us again tonight. <laughs> so I'll just start again just for those of you that have just joined. So we've done some hair prep on this practice head already. She's had some mousse and some salt spray. Well, I haven't actually put mousse in the practice head because the hair's quite dry already, but she's definitely had some salt spray in there. If I was working on a client, I would definitely use mousse. Blow dry the hair, and then I've crimped the hair, and I've put a few little curls here 
in the hair. Now you might find that when you've done all that hair prep, especially to your practice head, the hair can be a little bit fly away and a bit matte. And if your lady wants more of a glossy look, then what you can do just before curling is you can get a little bit of curl cream. So this is a Goldwell Creative Texture Cream, but there's another really good one, the Tiggy Curlesque as well. That's a really good one. And you can just kind of smear it, just a little kind of touch of the cream. Just put it on the section of hair that you're going to curl and that will smooth down any flyaways. And then, just checking in the mirror, and then we're going to curl that section of hair with the curl cream on. And you'll find that you get a lovely curl, but it also is glossy and gorgeous and long lasting. I'm not going to hold that on too, too long, but it really brings the glossiness back to the hair. Sorry, I'm getting hot again. Oh, super, super, super close evening, hot and humid in London tonight. So now, all we're going to do next is pick up our little sections of hair. Now, you don't actually have to curl the hair to create this style, but it kind of helps you if you do especially when you're first learning how to create hairstyles, because the curl kind of tells you where the hair wants to go. So we could use a little prop here, just to prop that. I don't like that gap in the hair there. So I'm gonna use my prop here, just so that I'm happy with the way everything's looking. And we'll probably take these little props out later or push them in. That's it, and we're just going to keep going. We're going to use a little bit of padding for this style because she's got quite short hair. Let's see which bits we're going to leave down. I think I might leave those little bits down there and soften that curl. But because she's got quite short hair, I'm going to use I'm going to use some padding today. I'm going to do my best to keep an eye on the chat box as well. Have a look. Sorry, let's have a look. I find that short hair gets gappy between, but that any, tim, any tips on gappy hair? Yeah, you just have to be very careful as you go along. And you can use these pins to help fill, spread out the hair and fill in any little spaces. And if you've texturized the hair well, then you'll find you can kind of work with it and open out the hair and spread out each of these sections so that you don't get big gaps in the hair. And you can see how these little twists have just, let's see, do we want that down? Let's lift that up. These little twists have just given us this lovely kind of detail here at the side. So yes, working with short hair Really, what I would suggest doing is prepare, do the hair prep really well. So that's that side kind of done. We'll just need to come back and tweak these, separate them a little bit. There might be a touch too curly. Now we know we're not bringing them back. But it's make sure the hair prep, you prep the hair really well. That looks better. And I might bring a little bit more of that up. So it's all about hair prep. And when you're working with short hair, when you're working with short hair, just try to use, don't pick up big chunks of hair at a time. You kind of want to pick up small sections of hair so you can work with each section and make sure as you go along that you're happy with the way the hair is sitting. So there was a little bit of gap, a gap here. So I need to kind of pick that up just Sometimes you can use a little prop to help you kind of nudge the hair to where you want it to sit. And you can always come back later. This will help to give it a little bit of kind of staying power. And then you can come back later and take those out. Now let's see smaller sections. If you're worried about getting kind of gaps in the hair, 
use smaller sections of hair and position it so that you cover up any spaces that you don't like. And you'll find, and it's a lot better as well, I find this piece of hair belongs under there. That's, what's, that's what was wrong here. So as you go along, don't kind of think, I'm going to wait till I get to the end and then I'll put it right. You have to kind of, as you're going, so I kind of want to make sure these spaces here all look the way I want them to look. So you don't want to kind of get to the end and think, right, I've got to go back and correct that. So you want to, as you're going along, I'm going to put a bobby pin across here now. As you're going along, make sure you're happy with each piece of hair that you're working with. I'm just going to secure that across the back. There, that's better. And then bring this one back. Decide which bits we want to have down. Let's bring her around a little bit. Maybe we'll have these little bits here. It's never easy, I think, on these practice heads to get the exact amount of hair down around the face, especially if they need a little bit of a, she could, maybe she could do with having some layers cut in. That's better, a little bit smaller bits down, I think are better. And then we can bring this back, put a little twist in there, use the curl that you've got, let that curl help you as you go along. Let me check my questions again. Just in how to prep long hair. Mm. Long, thick hair. There isn't a way to prep long, thick hair quickly. You just have to. Um, so Carter was asking me about prepping long, thick hair. You have to, uh, with long, thick, heavy hair, it really depends what style you want to create. Um, yeah, it depends what style you want to create. But if you want to, if you were doing a kind of textured style like this for long, thick, heavy hair, if it's long, thick, soft, silky hair, then you've just you've got to get some mousse and some salt spray in there, blow dry the hair. If it's long, thick, heavy hair, sorry, noises outside. If it's long, thick, heavy hair that's quite coarse and maybe they've got a bit of a natural curl or wave to the hair, you might be able to get away with not crimping it because it might already, that texture might already be kind of, uh, the texture of the hair might be enough without you having to crimp. So you could save on the crimping depending on the hair type. But really for long, thick, heavy hair, you, it's best to allow the time. that the hair needs. Because hair prep, the correct hair prep makes the rest of, makes the styling much quicker. But we do have lots of tutorials on our e-learning course that show you how to work with hair of all different types, different lengths, long, thick, heavy hair, but whether it's fine hair, thick hair, curly hair, afro hair, that's it. Oh, let me cool down again. So uh, let's see, I can see myself in the mirror here, so I know I look super hot. <laughs> hot as in temperature hot. <laughs> okay. I might look hot as well, but I'm definitely boiling hot. <laughs> Okay, so now, now the bride that I did the other day, a week ago, I think it was, she wanted quite a wide roll. So you could put, we have done styles before where I put a ponytail here and rolled up the hair and then you get a little narrow kind of roll. But this lady wanted it to be a little bit wider so it came around to the sides. So what I did Use that little bit of cream, especially underneath the hair, because this is the bit of the hair that's going to be visible. We're going to use a little bit of padding for tonight's style. And I'm going to roll, that might be a little bit too much. Just let me cut that up. We don't need a lot of padding because this lady doesn't have a lot of hair. So this was originally a donut that I've just cut up and I've got a little piece of padding, little piece of the netting from the donut. 
don't need a lot for this side because she's got short hair and we don't the roll doesn't need to be too big and I'm just going to wrap that around that padding and roll the padding up the top there and then secure trying to do it back to front that's it I think it's going to work and then we've got all this lovely this lovely kind of piece of padding here to secure so we can get this this little roll secured here up to the top using my up and over technique we've got those bobby pins in the back there that's it and then you can tweak out your little roll. She's a little bit lopsided. Never work from the back <laughs> when you're creating your styles. And then just tweak. So you're just going to just tweak a little bit and play with the roll. Bringing it out a little bit at the sides. That's it. and making sure you're happy with the shape of it. And of course, covering up this little, any little bit of padding that's visible. I'm gonna pin that up to there. I'm just using my tail comb here just to help me nudge and shape the bun. Hi Caroline, thank you for joining me tonight. Now, in this last week here in the UK, we've had our kind of lockdown, not lockdown, but our kind of social distancing regulations have all kind of been extended. So I don't know about you, but I've had lots of my brides who were hoping to have big weddings in early July, all changing their dates today. So I had previous dates, like the 17th of July, I must have had 30 inquiries for that day and I've been booked up for ages and now my lady's moved that date to August and it's a Monday in August so I am free because every other Saturday I'm practically booked up. So I don't know about you, you might be kind of moving everybody around in your diary but it's certainly super busy for me at the moment and you know what, it's lovely doing bridal hair because, well, I just love, it's a lovely environment to work in because everybody's happy. And providing you get your timing right, the job is stress-free. I think we're almost there. I think she looks beautiful. We do have a few things to do, however, just yet. We've got these little pins here. And there's a little space just there that I think I would like to cover. Let's have a look. That's better. But because we've got this texture in the hair, you can kind of move it around a little bit. You don't really want to get to the end here and have lots of big gaps to, to cover up. Because ideally what you want to do is as you go along, make sure you're happy with the position of the hair. Now, if you're moving any of these and it looks like the hair's moving, then you can always just push them in. You don't have to take them out might give a little bit of extra stability to the hair to push them in but you have to be careful you don't want to end up with them being visible and I think I'm just not happy with that one piece what you could also do is take a picture of the hair that needs a little twist in it I think or maybe we'll leave her down take a little picture of the hair and so you can see it from different angles and then that really helps you to see which bits, which bits you need to tweak and which bits you need to change. Because you might see a gap on camera that you missed when you're looking at it kind of in the mirror or straight, just looking at the style. You can use your little gap there, that's it. Use a little bit of spray wax if you've got any crazy flyaways that need taming. And there we have our lovely 
low bun that's perfect for a bride or a bridesmaid. Let me just check out other questions. Mm, do I recommend, Carter's asking me, do I recommend any bridal magazines for hair ideas? You know what? Let me turn these tongs off. I haven't looked at a bridal magazine for a long time. I used to advertise in bridal magazines years ago, but now it's just everything. When I go to people's houses, they used to have lots of magazines and they're all the corners turned over with the styles that they like. Now it's just all on Instagram or Pinterest. So I don't look at bridal magazines anymore. I think um, I just look. My bride show me all these fabulous styles online. And you'd be surprised when you're doing a trial run I can see a pin there. You might, as you look around, you might see, keep looking at your stars, you might see some little pins that you don't want, shouldn't be there. That's better. When you're creating these bridal hairstyles, always kind of keep an open mind because you never know halfway through a style, you might discover that you've created, you know, something completely different and it's a gorgeous style in its own right. So always be aware that as you're going along or maybe sometimes even taking those styles out, you think, oh my goodness, stop that's just how how it looks you know how you want it to be so good luck with your bridal hairstyles and your bookings you've got them hopefully you're really busy with bookings over the next couple of weeks and uh stay safe out there so i'm still looking at the style i love it stay safe out there and i will see you all next week thank you for joining me sorry if i haven't answered your questions but um I get carried away look, working on these hairstyles. Let's see if we've got any more. Ah, oh, thank you, Sharika. I'm glad you like it. I love it. <laughs> okay, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.